you. You ready? I'm ready when you are. Let's do it. You ready? Okay. Action! Today, I'm going to be watching every film that is nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars 2023. This video has no affiliation with the actual Oscars society company dynasty this video is so you guys can get a sense of the oscars this year and you can sound a little bit more knowledgeable about the films at your oscar watch parties on sunday if you guys want me to do your dirty work and watch all the movies so you don't have to and recommends which ones you should or shouldn't watch you guys should subscribe i took a deep dive into my back end and i saw that a bunch of you that are watching are not subscribed well the perks of subscribing you get to be here you get to watch my videos if you turn on the notifications you can be here right when i am every single time i post i am responding and interacting with comments because i love seeing what you guys have to say so be the first one to hop on my videos to hop on my back end and <laughs> conversate with me in the comment section down below. I'm gonna be watching all the films and I'm gonna be taking you through my thoughts about each film in depth. I have a rubric system this time, so it's a little bit more structured so you guys can differentiate my personal opinions versus the actual plot, acting, and those opinions. We have five things we're gonna be testing these movies on today. The first one is plot. Plots are super important to movies, obviously. They are what we pitch movies as when we are talking to our friends. Usually, we go into the plot summary when we're talking about a movie, not necessarily the acting, the score, and these other elements. Usually, those are more afterthoughts. So the plot is going to be a very important thing that we're gonna be looking at, whether it's entertaining, whether it's interesting, moving, sad, um, whether it's unoriginal, we're going to be testing it to its limits. Next is going to be pace. When I say pace, I'm talking about the speed in which the plot moves forward. One thing the Oscars gets criticized for is that almost every single nominated film is a snooze fest, meaning that it is slow, it is boring, and it is something that you would fall asleep to. It's something all prestigious films get criticized for. And I am not one to shy away from that. I very much love fast paced movies, but I am not going to let that bias come into play. When I judge the pace of these movies, it is not going to be if it's slow and I don't like slow movies personally. No, it's going to be if that slowness or if that pace that is set throughout the movie is worth it. Next is gonna be score. I love movie scores. I listen to them in my free time. I think they are so crucial to any movie as we all know. This one is kind of just in there for giggles. I personally love judging scores. If some, I love it when a score sticks out to me. So we're gonna see which scores stand out and which ones fall into the shadows. That doesn't really mean anything coming from me because my knowledge on music is even less than my knowledge on film. So why are we doing this video? Next is gonna be the acting. Acting is literally all the Oscars is about. Most of the time Oscar season is just about the performances from the actors. It's a smooge fest for each performer and actor part of the Academy, which is fine. I love it. I eat it up. I think it's great. I love praising actors and deciding who was better and who was worse. I love pitting people against each other. And last but not least for this rubric system, this is the trend level factor. This is basically just if I personally enjoyed the movie, if I thought it was fun and fresh, if I would go see it again because at the end of the day, it's my world. Everyone else is just living in it. I can create whatever reality I want to and I'm going to be a part of this rubric system. I can control the narrative of this video you, <laughs> and I'm going to make it just the way I want it. Trin Factor, does Trin Lovell like it? Let's go. And here are the nominees for Best Picture. Top Gun Maverick. <laughs> All quiet on the Western Front. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Avatar, the way of water. The Fableman. Triangle of Sadness. Elvis. Women talking. 
banshees of initial. Ta. Everything Everywhere All at Once is the only movie of these that I saw in the year 2022. The other ones, I did not. Top Gun Maverick fell asleep during. Triangle of Sadness, I got distracted. Elvis, I tried to turn it on twice. Got distracted and left the room. Today, we are going to be watching every single... Today, we are going to be watching every single movie nominated for Best Picture. Let's get it, let's get it. Today's first watch is The Fablemans. We started off this watch journey a little shaky being as the power went out in the middle of this movie because there was a tornado. All is well, me and my dog are safe. The movie is directed by Steven Spielberg and stars Paul Dano, Michelle Williams, and Seth Rogen. This movie follows Steven Spielberg and his introduction to film and the journey it took to become a picture maker. It also follows the challenges he faced and his family dynamic while growing up. This plot was really interesting to me and it was really amazing that Steven Spielberg got to make this movie about his own life. I don't think anyone else could have told his story better. Obvi. This movie has some serious undertones, but it also has this slice of life energy, which is very charming in my opinion. With many troubling subjects as your parents having an affair, bullying at school, anti-Semitism, Steven Spielberg still threads a long comedy through the movie, which is done in a really seamless way that makes the movie so charming in my opinion. I gave this plot an 8 out of 10. I thought it was a really wonderful story to see. I think this movie has a a true love for film behind it so you get to see that through the eyes of the lens and it really does give a sense of nostalgia even though I never grew up during that time it's packed with this childlike innocence growing up very much a coming of age inspiring story to see someone like Steven Spielberg and see everything that he went through. This movie has such a care and love for cinema that is so wonderful and exciting to see. We haven't seen a movie really love cinema this much in a while and I was really in love with how it was depicted. The acting in this film was top tier. Michelle Williams was incredible. She was in your face the entire movie and she just kept coming back with this drama, this hysteria, this um, this raw realness that was just like watching a train wreck, which I loved. I loved seeing her character go through all this disarray, but still have this like element of comedy behind her. And I think that Michelle Williams did that very well, which I think it's like a hard role to play, this kind of chaotic mother, who has like mental problems, who's having an affair, but also has this like underlying comedic role to her, which I thought was very interesting to see. I think Gabriel LaBelle did an amazing job. I am so surprised he didn't get an Oscar nomination. He was so phenomenal. I think that his ending dialogue scene between him and his high school bully was literally so good that would have been like his oscar nom video that they played and i wish he got nominated for best actor because he really deserved it i think he did an amazing job throughout this movie and i was just in love with his performance the score wasn't anything too special in my opinion i can't really remember anything that stood out to me but like i said earlier in the video that doesn't mean much coming from me being as i don't know much about scores so i gave the score a five out of ten i just really wanted something to stand out to me that's really what this score rubric is for to see if a score really stood out to me and made me want to like download it afterwards the pace i gave a 7 out of 10 i think it was worth the slight lulls throughout the movie there's a little bit of a lull throughout the first act and maybe like two or three times i felt a little bit impatient with the pacing of it and that really goes to show my attention span not really a reflection of the movie i think the slight lulls through the first act paid off at the end I think it was an ending worth the wait. All in all, I think this might be one of the saddest yet hopeful movies I've ever watched. One of my favorite quotes from the movie was, you don't owe your life to anyone, not even me. It stood out to me, loved the delivery. I gave this movie a four stars. I just thought it was super charming and I would see it becoming best picture in another year. I think this year has a 
bit too many strong competitors for Fablements to really shine, but I wish it did. This is Triangle of Sadness. This movie is directed by Ruben Otsland. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that correctly. The movie stars Charlie Dean Creek, Harris Dickinson, Woody Harrelson, and Dolly Dillon. This is a movie all about wealth and capitalism and communism. It is a shit show of a movie, being as the plot is just shoving you in the face with satire on society, but I quite liked it. The movie follows a couple of influencers who are invited to a luxury cruise ship alongside a group of out of touch wealthy people. This all takes a very unexpected turn when a brutal storm hits the ship. I actually surprisingly liked this film. I tried watching it like a couple months ago and I ended up turning it off because I was just kind of not paying attention. But after sitting down and watching it, it was so funny. I laughed out loud while watching it. It also has so many great dialogue pieces. And at the end of the movie, it really depicts this social hierarchy turned once they end up on the island. I think the contrast between the first act and the last act was wonderful to see. I loved how purposeful it was. Through the first act of the plot, I was a little bit lost on the direction that they were going through, but they have a few key hooks that keep you entertained and keep you drawn into what's going on. The second act was a little bit messy, but in the best way possible. It has a lot of chaotic scenes, a lot of like out of context scenes that you think are out of context, but kind of all fall into place once the third act happens. I thought the third act was lively and funny creating a great dynamic between all these characters. It has great twists and additions to the relationships the characters have with each other on the island. For acting, Dolly D freaking killed it. She was like a sleeper character that came up in the last act and just freaking annihilated everyone. When she came on screen in that third act, she commanded your attention just like she did with the characters and it was so brilliant to see best performance ever. For the pace, I would give it probably a seven out of 10. I think any slow parts paid off in the end. I think everything was very purposeful in this movie. Um, every bit of satire was placed very purposefully within the mix of drama. I thought the score was like a seven out of 10. I wouldn't download anything from it. It, was, it didn't stand out too much to me. Um, but each scene was elevated by the score in, in, in a way that made sense. So I'm not saying that it distracted me, but I, nothing stood out to me to download it. The Trin factor is that it is Trin approved. I loved the final act. I thought it was a really entertaining movie. I don't think I would watch it too many times after this. I would definitely watch it with a friend. This was definitely in my top watches of the Best Picture nominees. I think my favorite quote from the movie was, I think it's unsexy to talk about money. And I love the title reveal that the triangle of sadness represented the triangle of sadness between your eyebrows when you're scrunching. All in all, I think I would give this movie a four out of five stars. Elvis is directed by Baz Luhrmann and stars Austin Butler and Tom Hanks. You guys are gonna hate me for this one. I I watched Elvis and I could not get through it. I have tried watching Elvis two times before I sat down for this video. And right when I turned on this movie to film, I got hit with the biggest wave of depression induced by my period. I was so upset while watching this movie. Watching this movie made my pain 10 times worse. I don't want to watch this movie. I don't want to watch Elvis, it's so bad. <laughs> I have tried to watch this movie and I just can't get intrigued by it. And I feel really bad because people are saying this is a great movie and I cannot for the life of me get involved with this plot and care about what's going on. I lasted way longer than I did before. I think I got into like an hour and a half of the movie before I had to call it quits because first of all, I was in a lot of pain. And second of all, I was dying because I just didn't find it interesting. I think Austin Butler does an amazing job, but Tom Hanks just kind of ruins all the scenes for me. I really don't like the plot narrative to choose to have the story told through the manager's point of view. I think I would have much preferred it just being through Elvis's point of view. But at the end of the day, 
I do not care about Elvis, and this movie did not make me care about him either. I think the pace is fine, but the length of the movie is so long that it doesn't really matter your pace because it is such a long movie. The score was fine. The trend factor, I would not watch again. It was very hard for me to sit through, being as the length of it, and also other factors being as mother nature ripping out my insides. My favorite quote from this movie was, he's white. I would give this movie a two and a half out of five stars, being as I didn't give it a fair chance, but also I didn't like what I saw of it. Women Talking is directed and written by Sarah Poli. It stars Claire Foy, Jesse Buckley, Rooney Mara, and Frances McDormand. This movie follows the women of an isolated religious colony when a shocking secret about the colony's men is revealed. For years in this colony, the men have occasionally drugged the women and then raped them. The truth comes out and then the women talk about their new situation and what they will decide next. This is based on a true story. It's a very heavy drama and it is is breathtaking. This movie made me hold my breath while watching it. The plot is the plot is difficult to watch, it is difficult to hear about, it is heartbreaking, and it is also empowering while watching. The women have to decide between three things: fighting and staying, surrendering and leaving, or staying and surrendering to the men's request to forgive their rapist. I gave the plot a 10 out of 10. The pace was actually fast with immediately telling the story. It's heavy on dialogue, but each scene is so important in moving the plot along quickly. This might be my favorite score so far behind Everything Everywhere All at Once. The score was daunting and still hopeful at times with also this somber blanket cast along all of it. I know that makes no sense, but it was definitely one of the most most moving scores that I've watched so far. The trend factor, I really like this. I don't think I would watch it again. That's the only downside of this movie is that seeing it once was enough for me. I think this would be a really awesome class film. If I saw this in class, I would really enjoy it. But I overall really enjoyed this movie and there was a lot of quotes and dialogue pieces that really stuck with me. Some of my favorite quotes from the movie was, this story ends before you were even born. An act of wild female imagination and without language for it, there was a gaping silence. Acting was 10 out of 10. Every single woman put their whole heart into this movie. I mean, and and we weren't not and we were not expecting anything less from the stellar cast. I mean, I knew they were going to go crazy in this movie with their acting abilities. So overall, a four and a half out of five stars for women talking. Top Gun. Maverick. Top Gun Maverick did not stand a fighting chance against me, being as I hate Tom Cruise with a burning passion. The first time I tried watching this movie over Christmas break, I fell asleep and my parents were eating up the movie. I've also never seen the first one, so any hits of trying to get me to reminisce on the first movie were lost. The plot follows Tom Cruise's character after more than 30 years of service as one of the Navy's top aviators, Pete Maverick Mitchell is where he belongs. His character is now a teacher and he is pushing the envelope as a courageous test pilot and dodging the advancement in rank that would ground him. Maverick must confront the ghost of his past and his deepest fears to then go on a mission that demands the ultimate sacrifice from those who choose to fly it. I know a lot of people like this movie and I just could not get behind it. The score was actually pretty epic. I thought the score was actually probably one of the best parts of the movie. I think the acting was really good from what I could tell. It wasn't anything crazy. I wouldn't give anyone a nomination over it. It was very much just there. Um, like I said, I have a huge bias against this movie. So I would ask someone else about this movie I would not take anything of what I'm saying with any real validation for how you feel about the movie because I know a lot of people like this movie. I just couldn't. It was the same as with Elvis. Like I know people like it. I just could not get behind it. There was something that I just, this one I knew why. This one, it was literally because of Tom Cruise. I just don't like Tom Cruise and seeing him on screen evokes rage in me. I don't like watching his movies. Not, there's not a single Tom Cruise movie that I enjoy watching. Tom Cruise looks so weird. Tom Cruise, why do you look like that? No. <laughs> kind of a 
long movie. I think it's it's two hours and 11 minutes and it definitely feels it. I told you I was gonna be unbiased with this rubric system and I am not, I am sorry. The trend factor for this movie, this movie goes hard for some people and I'm just not one of those people. No win for the trend factor, but if it wins your factor, then that's all that matters. If you wanna know all my thoughts on everything everywhere all at once, I have an entire video dedicated to it, so I'm not gonna waste time here talking about how much I love the movie. It's a five out of five for me. I think it was amazing, but the link will be in the description and right on the screen right now if you guys wanna go check it out. <laughs> Tar, directed by Todd Field, starring Kate Blanchett. This movie falls renowned musician Lydia Tar and the inevitable downfall of her career. This movie is definitely not for people who don't like prestigious art. I think this movie has a very specific theme it wants to follow and it dives head first into it. It takes the obsessed artist and puts you right through the lens of that character. A lot of the times when we see obsessed artist movies, we are looking at it from a third point of view, which can be great, but it also takes this element of the art away from it. We're realizing how prestigious and kind of silly being so addicted to your craft can be. Whereas in Tar, it takes it all very seriously. The plot is your typical downfall of the obsessed artist, seeing someone how seeing someone who is either trying to achieve everything or has everything and inevitably landing at rock bottom by the end of the film. This movie is really heavy on dialogue, so if you're not a fan of that, I would not suggest this to you. Personally, I have been enjoying those films lately, being as with Women Talking and this movie, they're both very heavy on dialogue and everything is written within the pages. The acting is phenomenal. Kate is undeniably captivating in this role. There is no other person that could play it. She literally becomes the character. I forgot that she was an actor. I forgot that Lydia Tarr was not a real person while watching this film. And I think that is a wonderful place to be in. I have to give it to Kate. I would not be surprised if she snatched that best actress because she was just undeniably amazing. I think she was so fantastic. There are so many difficult one shots, very long pieces of dialogue that she just nails. I'm obsessed with it. I love her and I love her in this role. I think this is one of her like best roles ever. And I would not be disappointed if she got best actress. The acting was a 10 out of 10 along with her counterparts. I think everyone in this movie was really good, but this movie was Kate Blanchett's and she just knocked it out of the park. The score was amazing, but of course it had to be amazing. I was, n I was not expecting anything less than the score to be amazing. Of course, 10 out of 10 for the score. Um, of course, downloading it all now. It is thrilling, it is exciting, it makes you excited about classical music, and I love that. I think that is an amazing thing to have within movies to get me excited about something that I have practically no interest in. I think the pace has a little bit of issues within the third to second act. I think the pacing, I would give it like a uh, like a six out of 10. I think it has a constant beat throughout the first act two acts and then that transition between the second to third act there's like this lull within the rhythm of the story and i think that kind of drew me out a little bit so i wish they kind of kept that constant beat that was going on through the first and second act the trend factor i loved it i this one had my personal bias being as that I love obsessed artist movies i love the downfall it just checks all of its boxes this movie was lit. This movie was very lit and I would recommend it to everyone. There's a lot of good quotes from this movie, but my favorite quote was, you haul lesbian. Tar gets a three and a half out of five stars for me, being as I don't think the rewatchability is great for me personally. That might change with time, but me uh, with my attention span right now, I would not watch it again, but I would recommend it to people. So it gets about a three and a half to four stars. For the movie Avatar, I could not watch it because it's not available to rent and it's not in theaters. So I guess I just missed it. So Avatar, you get a three out of five just because I couldn't give you a fair shot. So. <laughs> Pity stars, but I'm sure it's great. I just cannot watch it because it's not available. I would go to the theater and see it, but I just can't.
It's just not in any theaters near me. All Quiet on the Western Front is a war movie directed by Edward Berger. It stars Daniel Bruhl and Felix Kammerer. This plot follows the war that breaks out in Germany in 1914. It follows Paul and his classmates who quickly enlist in the army to serve their fatherland. And very soon after being drafted, they realize the horrors of what actually is taking place. I'm gonna be very brief about this. I don't like war movies. They are my least favorite movies ever. There has not been a single war movie that I love. Not a one. I just despise them. I wouldn't take my review on this movie too seriously, being as that I already have a bias against it because I don't like war movies, but I will say this movie wasn't bad. The score was one of my favorite parts. They have a single score that kind of plays throughout the movie. Um, it keeps coming back almost like kind of like a motif, but it's a really like interesting score to have within a war movie. For some reason, it felt very like daunting, but still a little bit more like bright than a typical somber war score. If that makes any sense, please let me know because I feel like that doesn't make any sense. The plot and the concept of this movie is actually really interesting for a World War I story. I think that a lot of times, like I said, if you've seen one war movie, you've seen them all. But this movie was actually pretty interesting in the way that it chose to show uh, the character's point of view. Um, you really sink down deep into the brainwashing of these characters and the true shock and horror that they face whenever they end up seeing the tragedies that is actually going on. They stage some of the first act as if it's almost a coming of age. It's very light. They are very giddy and excited to do this. This is the this is their honor. This is this is like going on a school field trip for them. It's very much framed as a coming of age. And throughout the war scenes um, and the battle that they're in, there's a bunch of teen distortion throughout it. Of course, this movie is going to be really hard to watch, but it is worth a watch. I think it was actually one of the best war movies I've watched, particularly because I don't really like the genre and I actually found myself liking this movie like a good amount like for someone who has no interest in war movies I think I like actually like this movie a fair amount I think the acting was great this was apparently Felix's debut film and I think he fucking killed it I was like not expecting that this was his first film ever I thought he was in the game for a while I always find war movies too slow. This one wasn't too bad. I think it picked up. I think it had a nice beat throughout the movie. So I don't have much to complain about. I would give this movie a three out of five stars just because of my own personal bias, but I, I wanna give it a high enough score because I don't believe it's like a bad movie. I just wouldn't watch it again because of my own personal opinions. I have so little to say about The Banshee of Anishirin because this was me when I watched the movie. I am so sorry. There was no time in my filming to refilm and rewatch The Banshee of Anishra and I have to start editing this video. I'm so sorry, Colin. I love you, Colin. Like I really do, but this movie literally put me to sleep. And I had tried to watch this movie two months ago and I fell asleep then too. So I'm so sorry, Colin, but like, it was a no for me, I, I snoozed. I'm coming to you from my laptop while editing this video, but that was the completed Oscars watch for this year's Best Picture nominees. This was a very trend level video. You cannot get any more trend level than this. I told you I was gonna give you opinions about the films. I told you that I was gonna be unbiased and I wasn't. I wasn't at all. Sorry. I'm sorry. I should be better about that. But there's tons of reviews out there showing you a completely unbiased review, very analytical of every film. We don't need another one. But those were my thoughts on this year's Best Picture nominees. I think that Everything Everywhere All at Once is gonna snag Best Picture. I think it's probably between Everything Everywhere All at Once and maybe, in my opinion, it would be between Everything Everywhere All at Once and The Fablemans. I just don't see the Fablemans having that great of a chance. I'm literally thinking about the list of films. I really don't have one that's coming up there by everything everywhere all at once. Personally, my ranking of the Oscar nominated films, putting aside the Banshee of Anishirin and Avatar because I clearly didn't give them a fair shot, I would put Elvis at the bottom, then Top Gun Maverick, then All Quiet on the Western Front, 
women talking, triangle of sadness, the fable mints, and then everything everywhere all at once. And you can say that I'm wrong, but I'm not in charge of who wins, so it doesn't really matter what I think. That was it for today, guys. I hope you guys liked it. It was a little bit of a different format than what I usually do, but I enjoyed it. So let me know if you guys enjoyed it. Uh, happy Oscars. Have fun at your Oscar watch parties. I will be in my apartment all by myself watching the Oscars like I always do. Yes. I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye.